Here I have three security group scenarios and they all pretty much do the same thing, but the configuration is different to give you a good idea of variation on how you can achieve things. And so the idea is we have a web application running on EC2 instance and it is connecting to an RDS database to get its information running in a private subnet. Okay, and so um, in the first case, what we're doing is we have an inbound rule on the uh, on the SG database saying allowing anything from 5432, which is the Postgres uh, port number uh, for this specific IP address. Um, and so it allows this EC2 instance to connect to that RDS database. And so the takeaway here is you can specify the source to be an IP range or a specific IP. And so this it's very specific. It's port slash 32 and that's a nice way of saying exactly one IP address now in the second scenario it looks very similar um, and the only difference is instead of providing an IP address as a source we can provide another security group so now anything within the security group is allowed um, to gain access um, for inbound traffic on 5432 okay now in our last use case down below we have inbound traffic on port 80 and inbound traffic on port 22 uh, for the SG public group. And then we have the EC2 instance and the RDS database within its own security group. So the idea is that um, that EC2 instance is allowed to talk to that RDS database and that EC2 instance is not exposing um, the RDS database uh, to it, well, it wouldn't because it's in a private subnet, so it doesn't have a public IP address. But the point is, is that this EC2 instance uh, now is able to get traffic um, uh, from the internet. And it's also able to accept someone from, um, uh, like, for an SSH access. Okay. And so the big takeaway here is that you can see that an instance can belong to multiple security groups, and rules are permissive. So when we have two security groups, if this one has allows, then this is going to take precedence over SG stack, which it doesn't have anything, you know, because it denies by default everything, but anything that allows is going to override that, okay? So you can nest multiple security groups onto one EC2 instance, so just keep that stuff in mind.